Yeah, they're going to make a run, all right, right out the door. Yeah, they are. Like they oh do my every God. year. Who's they the suck. biggest dick in the sports world you ever met? Like one that you can't eat, like it, you don't, you can just separate him from the pack in your mind. Well, yeah, it's a guy, you know, a couple of guys you wouldn't even know. A guy named Ron Reed, who ironically, what sport, what position? He was baseball pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies, the Atlanta Braves, but he also played pro basketball and in the NBA. And he was a dick with ears. He was just an Why was he such, Was he just a he dick just, to you or a dick no, to everybody? No, he was a, to everybody. He just hated the media. And he made sure that you knew if, you know, if he saw you with a tag or, you know, knew you were with the, the media, he just would start calling you names and, you know, this and that. And then there was another prick. And I hate to talk bad of the dead, but the guy's name is Nino Espinosa. Joe McDonald uncensored. Let's yeah. talk bad about the dead. They're yeah. fucking dead, dude. So we'll do it. Who's the biggest <laughs> asshole him. dead guy that you you know? <laughs> Actually, him. I'm, I'm gonna glad. say Andrew the Johnson. The day I heard he was dead, I said, "Good fucker deserved to die." <laughs> That's he Joe was McDonald wrong. uncensored on Fake Mustache Studios. Yeah. People, yeah. He, subscribe he, to it, please. He says to me, he thought he was being a smart ass. He says, oh, "Hey man, how much you weigh?" I said, "About your ERA." Ba -da 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 -da. He lost his fucking mind. He Numbers started coming jokes. after me. Really? Oh, yeah, it was great. Because there's famous things on YouTube of athletes like Bobby Bonilla getting in the face. Of the reporter. Of the, of the reporter. Yeah. And Bonilla had it so bad. They booed Bonilla so bad at Shea Stadium, he had to wear earplugs in right field to drown out the sounds. And Bobby was a great guy. He is a great guy. I met him at an SNL after party, and he seemed real nice. Real, is. like, real, and I mean this just matter-of-factly, like, real white like a, it was like talking to a white like hey guys like he was like a real nerdy like white guy boy I know he was like a muscle bound brother but when you it was like bizarre when you go hey Bobby he's like hey how are you man yeah he's a great a great but guy but the dumb prick wore bright orange earplugs if you're gonna wear earplugs to drown out the fans at home that hate you maybe get earplugs the color of your ears oh no he wanted them to know I'm sure. That's why he did it. He you also used so? to wear a, a safety pin in his ear as an earring. I heard he wore a couple cocks across his mouth. I don't think he did that. No. Oh, no, I'm thinking of somebody else. No. So, <laughs> us, <laughs> maybe, maybe it was Nino Espinosa, but I guess we can't ask he's, him he's now. The, he is the biggest dead asshole that might have been gay ever. Yep. Nino and, Espinosa. Uh, you know, he, right now he's in a casket, and they had such a hard time burying him because they couldn't get the other dead cocks out of his face. No, it's not that. The fucking ground didn't even want to take him. He was that rotten. <laughs> he was that rotten that the ground wouldn't even open for? up for the bastard. Who? He played for the Mets and the Phillies. And what position did he... Oh, he's a pitcher. He pitcher, just said ERA. Yeah. He was a prick. Who... A the, real prick. Now, there's athletes that people... Bo Diaz was another guy. He was a catcher for the Cincinnati Reds, and yeah. I think for Philadelphia as well. He hated the media, and it's the fucking most ironic, wonderful thing that ever happened. You know how he died? He got crushed by a satellite dish on the roof of his house. <laughs> now, that's pretty funny. <laughs> was he fixing it himself? He was trying to, yeah. He was trying to adjust, it and it fell on him and crushed him. He got crushed by was a piece. Was it Al Purpose? That guy who hates the media he gets crushed by a satellite dish. An actual piece of media ended his life. Yep. Should have kept his mouth shut. It seems like baseball players, if you had to make an order of sport, an order of like uh, the percentage of assholes, for some reason, baseball players seem to be bigger assholes than football. Hockey players are the coolest guys. The best. The best. They are just the guys guy. Yep. And, and they're just nice people. I don't yeah. know if it's from growing up in tiny towns in Canada uh, yeah, and stuff Canadians like that. Yeah, are nice. But they're good guys. Basketball players, for the most part, are good guys. Football players know that you don't really have as much access to them as, other, as you do to other athletes and other sports. Baseball players... You have a lot of access, and it becomes one of those familiarity breeds contempt with a lot of guys. You know, they see you keep Let's coming Let's run a movie back. set, and then the expression becomes, if, if you're on location someplace, the joke, the, the, it becomes familiarity breeds attempt. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I'm in Vancouver for three months. Let's do this. I'm sure. I'm going to fuck both Diaz. I can feel it. We've been on. <laughs> I've heard stories. About me and both Diaz? No, and I haven't heard any stories about them. So... Baseball players you. seem, I know you have, but oh, you in your first podcast, the Joe McDonald Uncensored, M C D O N N E L L, there Joe you go. McDonald Uncensored, subscribe to his podcast. 
you uh, very nice shout outs to me. Yep. And very accurately explained the first time I came to ESPN Studios when yep. you were in there. I came in butt ass naked with yep. my dick tucked between my legs. And making fun of our gay call screener, Roger. No, no. Didn't or make fun of him. Trying to entice him. Made friends with him. Roger's a great guy. I've never made fun of a gay in my life. I'm on the waiting list my damn self. Yeah. Gay rights are human rights. So that's, you got to be careful, Joe. Because then you went on to say, hated. And you said it like three, th- just hated my partner, Doug Kikorian. And I remember going, I, ne- I don't have a single negative thought about Doug Kikorian. You hated Doug. You used to call him an asshole. That was like the shtick. So did you. Yeah, but I, well, I meant it too. <laughs> I'm not going to say, well, was, I meant it. I meant it as well. I didn't know him to hate him. And my thing with Doug was he never seemed to take a position on anything. Whatever you said, his position was, oh, come on, Joe. Yeah, that, you would it, say, yeah. I don't think signing Dwight Howard was a great move. Oh, cow dear. Come on, Joe. How do you say? And I said, I called him on the fence Kikorian. That's all he ever did. Yep. But I certainly want to set the record. Remember when he used to keep telling you, I want to do a story on you, Jay. I want to do a column on you. Oh, that's right. Every and that's time why I, you said you hated him. I, I, you know what? I stand corrected. Yep. I grew to hate Doug Kukorian because he's one, one of, of these us people. Did drugs and one of us didn't. Only, yeah, I wasn't doing them then. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I now I remember clear as a bell. You so just, it was true hatred. You it just, wasn't fueled it was, hatred. It was earned hatred. Yeah, there you go. And it's a very weird showbiz thing that you'll understand, and like some of the listeners will understand. When so, like, look, I'm a, look, I'm an actor, I'm a comic, and we could just say hi, and we're cool. And I understand you're gonna go like, hey, I liked you in this. And the next time you see me, you might say like, you might every time you see me, you might go, I just can't get over the movie Go, which doesn't really happen. I'm just saying, for example. But Doug's thing was he felt compelled to tell me he was going. Doug wrote for the the Daily, Long Beach Press Telegram. The Long Beach Press Telegram. Before that, he was you know big time at he the was, Herald Examiner. Yeah. Before it went. So a writer for the but, uh, Long Beach Telegram? Press Telegram. Long Beach Press Telegram. Not the New York Times, not the L.A. Times. Still a nice newspaper. Yeah, it was. But it's not like that'll help my career if I get a little op-ed piece about me in the Long Beach Press Telegram. It would just kind of be like a push as far as career swing. Would you agree? I would. Okay. But every time I went into the studio, he goes, Jay, I'm going to do a story on you. To which the first 14 times I reply... Great. Yep. Let's do it. But then he never either he had no it was the it was the false sincerity of what he was saying. Cuz then every time I called he goes, "You know, Jay, I really got to do that story on you." And yeah. then it became like, "Shut the fuck up. We're talking about the Lakers." <laughs> Mijo. You know I used to just check out because I would listen to these two go back and forth and I just sit there and just laugh oh, because to on, me it was Joe, so you funny. Never checked out, Joe. Come on. Uh, sometimes I did. I loved to give Doug enough rope. What I saw what, right when you got up and running on Twitter, which is what? What's your Twitter handle? Joe on the radio. Or at Joe on the radio. One of the first, and I, you and I had a conversation about you know social media and tweeting, and getting the fans involved, especially when you're doing a daily yeah. sports show, which is exciting. And I love your show because finally I get to listen to Joe McDonald. It's almost like all the times I heard you on 570, 1150 when you're in KFWB News Time. Here's yeah. Joe McDonald with sports. <laughs> and then like I always felt like you were right up against a glass ceiling of going, fuck these guys. Oh, and you I, have I, no idea. I do have an idea. And I really had this vibe from Joe McDonald like – this guy needs to be like unshackled and unchained. And then finally, now you're doing a daily sports podcast, the Joe McDonald Uncensored, where I get to hear you go, the Marlins, it's a fucking clown house. <laughs> These people are assholes. They have no commitment. And I go, okay, good. This is exactly how people should be hearing Joe McDonald raw and uncut. And the bad thing is once I get back into doing a radio show, which is, you know, maybe happening shortly, I'm going to have the best of both worlds. And why I say that's a bad thing is because it's going to be tough not to go on a regular airwave that's governed by the FCC and not say it's a fucking clown house. Roger Goodell's a douchebag. Yeah, I mean, well, I might be able to get away with that. I would. You know what? Why push it? You got to think about it. The answer is no. Uh, no, Well, you know what? You're right. And that's why the first night I did, the first one I did, and Andrew was there, it was like everything just flowed naturally. And I was just like, 
wow, this is, it was really bizarre to me to just have all that stuff come out naturally because I thought I would be forcing it just to see what it was like, you know, to be recording me cussing and and everything else. And it was just like it was natural. And then, you know, as it's gone on, there have been entire shows when I've gone without saying anything. And, you know, and then there have been other times when it just comes out where, you know, somebody's a fucking clown and needs to be pointed out. Yeah, well, this Yesterday? is going to air in like three weeks. So this Three weeks ago, you had a show yeah. <laughs> where you called No, what I'm trying to do, too, with that is take people behind the scenes a little bit, too, because, you know, you watch TV and you see these guys in 10-second bites or hear it on the radio. So I'm trying to play stuff, either long interviews like the one I did with Albert Pujols, and I'm sitting down with Dwight Howard uh, on Thursday, which will run Friday, and... You know, just let them hear what these guys are like when they talk for more than 30 seconds. And Kobe Bryant is involved with trying to change the homeless situation in L.A. And he had a news conference the other day, and I, I you know, played the news conference back for people so they can get an idea of what these guys are when they're not running around in shorts and, you know, doing stuff like that. And that's what that's another thing that I can bring you know, to this whole deal that we're trying to do because uh, a lot of other guys just don't have the access or they're too lazy to get out there and do it. That's why you were the get. A lot of people on Twitter wanted me to get Davey Max sports program from the, he's a guy from the old, from the, the old, the Ron and Fez show, um, uh-huh. Sirius. And I was like, you know what? But Joe, like, we'll, like, I, like you just said, we'll sit down and talk to Albert Pools for like a half hour. And like, I, Davey Max, like, more of a comedy guy. Yeah. And you know what? Did Kobe and- rape that girl? Oh, I don't think he raped her at all. We had John Sally in here, and he said, absolutely no fucking way on God's green earth did Kobe Bryant even act inappropriately with this No, girl. well, that I wouldn't say is true. I think he was done and kind of said, get the fuck out <laughs> as soon as he was done. And that is what apparently pissed her off. That's the stories I've heard for years now is that he literally was, it's like one of those scenes you would see in a movie where, you know, some guy just fucks this woman and says, all right, time, get out. And she, she thought, says, she I'm no hooker. She was, yeah, you know? she thought she was going to be like his Colorado girl. Yeah, basically. Like and your, she hey, was your, for a minute, two minutes, uh, five minutes, who knows? Kobe's got know. no stamina. Uh, who knows? Why would he? <laughs> After playing, fucking Phil ran him into the ground 44 well, minutes a night. Jeez, not Louise, only that, but he was bench, doing Phil. it on a bad knee. He was about to have knee surgery. That's why he was up there anyway. So he was probably on bottom. Yeah. And let her do reverse cowgirl on him. Do you think Mike Tyson raped that girl? No. I. You know, the thing is, I don't think these guys have to rape women. That's my whole point. Well, no rapist has to rape women. Yeah, they do. It's for dominance. A lot of them compulsively have to rape women. But it's for dominance, not for sex. Uh, It's a dominant. It's a violent crime. Mike Tyson wanted to dominate a 90-pound woman. Why? So a member, and, and there's a point to all this, as a member of the media, you are inside the world of sports. And what I like about Joe McDonald Uncensored, the podcast, is when you explain the power structure of, uh, just to use it as a tablet again, the Florida Marlins, like, this guy is Jeffrey Loria's fucking stepson. He's got no yeah. business being like, I don't know what his job title is. And like as Chief a Chief f- Sucker of Dad Daddy in law's dick. That's what his job <laughs> is. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. At Joe on the radio. Let him know what you think. <laughs> but like I don't know that until you say it. I just you, as fans, we just see names on the ticker go by and we have no idea. And like I didn't know Kobe Bryant is doing a thing for the homeless. Like that's my thing. The food banks of la that's my thing and when people want me to save like fucking dogs and cats from haiti i'm like are you out of your mind there's human beings under the rubble you want me to spay a cat absolutely and i'm and i'm an animal lover so the fact that kobe is going and i'm really glad you played that press conference because you know why there's so many homeless people in santa monica because they're bust here by every other part of los angeles and then churches like saint monica's and calvary christian feed them so this is like the destination for homeless. If you're wandering around the valley, you're left to your own devices. But if you come to Venice Beach or Santa Monica or the Pacific Palisades, you actually are fed. Yeah, not only that, but it's also, seriously, it's also cooler. 
and it's a little more, you know, you're sitting out there, it's 100 degrees in the valley, and it's 80 degrees here, and goes down to 60 at night, you're not dying like, out there. Like Fonzie cool, like it's just cool. No, I mean cooler temperature-wise. Hey man, I'm I mean, in the if west If you're side. homeless, it's bad it's enough, up. you shouldn't have to sweat your balls off, too. That's for sure. It's always weird when you see a homeless guy, and he's like ripped, and he's in shape, and you're like, bro, I have a fucking gut, and I'm like running on the beach. This guy's sleeping on like a, you know, on the sidewalk. We have a thing. We will all, most of the time. My wife Elizabeth and I sitting here. We will the give lovely to Miss people. Elizabeth. Well, you yeah, took we, her from the Macho Man. Yep, that's it. And she's dead too. Not my Elizabeth. His Elizabeth.